So this week I'm going to be out foxing using one of the best thermal scopes on the market from Infrared. Welcome to the shooting show. So I've just got to the uh, farm that I'm going to be having a look around this evening. Um, the farmer here, he gave me a text earlier today just to say that he had pheasant poles coming in next week and he'd seen four foxes out on the farm last night. So I um, got here just before, before dark and um, I'm just going to have a little look see over these couple of fields here. There's one just in front here that's just been cut so uh, might be worth a look, we'll see. So this evening I'm going to be using the Infrared TH50 thermal scope and I've got it here on my 223 so uh, this little combination works very well. I'm also going to be using the Pulsar Accolades just as a spotter and uh, well hopefully we'll find something out on these fields if not I'll have a little mooch around the rest of the farm and see what I can find. So this field's just been cut and I'm going to have a little stand just look over this lot. Um, it's only recently been cut so there's a good chance that um, there might be something having a little nose around it this evening. Uh, I've got a busy main road right behind me which um, might well cause me a bit of bother with the uh, recording sound but bear with me. <laughs> So I've just spotted a fox out over on the next field. Uh, it's quite a long way off though, so I'll just try giving it a squeak. But I've got a um, I've got busy main road right next to me, so uh, I think the sound from that is uh, it's just um, just drowning out the squeak. Uh, I'll just wait and see what happens because he's working his way round, so it might well be he'll come out in the next field over, which make him a bit closer. But he's still probably a good sort of 250 metres at the moment. So there's a road here as well, it's just come out that strip of cover, um, but he could just come trotting this way, so I'm beginning to think that maybe that fox is in that strip of cover and might have just pushed it out, so I'll keep my eyes peeled. Right, well that fox has just come out the top of that bit of cover, so either he didn't hear the call or um, he just chose to ignore it, I don't know, but yeah, he's moved off, so... I think I'll um, have a little look around the rest of the farm. So I've put the cooler out in the field there. Um, it's about probably about 80 yards out in the field. Uh, I've got a good view, well actually all, all around me here. So I'm gonna fire the cooler up and just see if we can pull something in off that further bank. So we go, uh, I'm gonna go with pheasant. Yeah, pheasant in distress.
he's gone over the top of that hill. Um, let's see if I can drive around the top and try and cut him off. It's a bit of an awkward place here because uh, he's gone over the top of that hill, but I've got to go up past that hill to get to the track to drive back down. But I'll see what happens. Hopefully, we'll be able to cut him off. Drive down to the gate down the bottom here, and um, hopefully, we'll be able to get a shot in this valley. Uh, there's not really anywhere else where he can go. Once he gets, in, gets into this uh, valley here, uh, well, he should be in the open, so. Well, one fox down. Didn't think about that. So, basically, what happened there was um, I had the caller out down the bottom there, started calling, and I had a fox come in from behind me, and he'd come trotting in, and then uh, he got to, uh, to the edge of the field, and then rather than coming sort of straight towards the caller, he ended up going following the, the hedge line up and over the top. And a couple of times he stopped but he was too near the top of the hill to get a safe shot and also in a couple of times there was cattle and that behind him there as well. So I had to basically just let him go over um, which brings him down into this little bowl here. Well I say little bowl, it's a big big sort of open area here. Uh, but yeah so I just drive over the top quickly, parked up here. Luckily the wind was in my favour and he was only, he was about 130 yards just down the front here but uh, he, when I first saw him he was just coming along the edge of this this sort of uh, slope here so yeah, I was easy shot, I didn't even know I was there he just stopped for a minute and was having a little scratch and wallop right, let's go and have a look So that's a young dog fox, this one. And uh, he was about 130 yards, I reckon, from the gate there. Uh, he was just nosing around in the stubble here. They was out mousing around when the field's recently been cut. So, uh, that's just the kind of candidate that will take pheasant pokes. So, one less around. Right, 
but I've just heard another fox calling over the top there. Um, it's a long way off, it's a big open farm this, but uh, I'll drive around, head down that way and just have a look, you never know, I might bump into another one. just up here and have a little look because there's a few largish blobs in this field but I think they're probably badgers but I'll have a quick look anyway. So they're just hares out there. Right, I've got to have a little stand down the other end of the farm, I think. I was just about to pack it in for the evening, but uh, I just come around this last little bit of the track and just looked over my shoulder and there was a fox going up between the sheep. Um, it went up and went up and through that hedge there and then uh, I'll just see it come up on the bank behind. So I quickly just got on the sticks there and had a quick shot. It was 120 metres, so about 130 yards away. But he's gone straight over, so I oh, do. Right, let's go and grab that one and uh, head back to the farm. Well, that's another dog fox. It looks like another one of this year's cubs as well. So, two down for the evening. I've had to work for them a little bit this evening, but the farmer should be pleased with that. So, that's it for me tonight. I am absolutely knackered. It is about four o'clock in the morning now I reckon and I need to go home and get a couple of hours sleep so thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe. Now what I wanted to do today was invite a few of my friends to come and shoot at this amazing estate in Northumberland. I've been here a number of times and I absolutely love the shooting. Um, what I want them to do is I want them to come and experience a proper walked up day shooting so a lot of exercise, a lot of shooting and hopefully some food at the end of the day. What's amazing about these small days is the fact that the guns experience such a massive variety of shooting. So we're going to start off the day by shooting some ducks, then we're going to shoot some partridge. And if the weather's right and the wind's in the right direction, these partridge could be driven over back towards us, or they could be long crossing shots, or they could be getting up in front of our feet. So it could be snap shooting. And then later on in the day, hopefully, if everything goes according to plan, we're going to try and aim for five or six brace of grouse, which is an absolute privilege to be able to shoot stuff like that this time of year. What we're doing today is where everybody started. Yeah. Doing the warm up. Yeah. It's where we all started. It's a nice friendly day. It's That's a what brilliant I like about day. Them. You can actually Excellent. have a chat with someone Very next relaxed. Year. Yeah, um, poach your friend's birds. Exactly.
<laughs> exactly. Big, big fan of that. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so we have a mixture of everything, and Whitfield just has the topo topography to uh, to, to produce some fantastic yeah. birds. Yeah. Which you'll probably see some of it today. Yeah. Um, walk up is very different, obviously. Yeah. You're shooting things going away from you. Unless it is windy and then it gets up and curls back over the top, yeah. which is just like a driven bird, so yeah, yeah. It's, it's fantastic. So this, James, is a, a 16 gauge. It's pretty, isn't it? It's, um, it's not a bad looking piece of ground. Like so I tend to go with a lighter cartridge and something which... Uh, Throw at the birds for me, I'm like a, I'm like a blank canvas. Yeah, yeah. Me. that's good though. We're gonna, get, like, we're gonna get you having a go. Everything you're saying is good, like that. At the we'll get you having a go later. Um, but that's yeah, they're, they're just a beautiful guy. looking gun, aren't they? They're a bit high, those ones. Yeah. I heard them, but they were just, just a bit high, Joey. I'm going to shoot as if I'm fishing for a bullfish. You put it in yeah, a couple of yards in, in front. front. Yeah, so they swim into it, don't they? Yeah. Which works quite nicely, doesn't it? That's the analogy, <laughs> yeah. Right, I'm just going to pretend they're a bonefish. And... <laughs> expectations of shooting as long yeah. as you're out on an open field, yeah, an open yeah. plane, and this this um, penis driving the birds towards you. Yeah. This is totally, it's quite exciting. Yeah, it's quite relaxed it's like as well. Yeah. The, the it birds. is, yeah, yeah. And you, it's quite relaxed, and this sort of walked up Day shooting is, is friendly. Bit of well, variety for you. Yeah, well, I mean, you can share throughout the day and we can have a relax and have a chat about everything. You know, I feel like a bit like a meerkat at the minute. <laughs> so we well, that's it, yeah. We get, end up getting whiplashed by the end of the and, day. And later on, you'll see that it's even worse because if, if they take <laughs> us down to somewhere where we can shoot grouse, that's even worse because you're like everything <laughs> moving. And, oh, I can't wait. I'm, I'm enjoying it already, mate. It's just yeah. nice being I'm out glad. in a different environment. And yeah. Like I say, I'm, I'm an angler, so this is just like one extreme to the other yeah, for me. Yeah. But Are you near a river? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Very soft cartridges for 28 gram, uh, number six in the 16 gauge. I don't think they got another one. They're a very sort of soft shell, which is yeah. really, really nice, and it, it doesn't happen very often. That was a big pack of that cartridges. Was massive. It, it, you get lost in them. You do, yes, you I really do. You absolutely you really lost. do. And this sort of shooting is great for that because no matter what happens all the time, you can see everyone else shooting, you can see the yeah. birds coming both ways. Here at Whitfield, there's loads of partridge, so we're getting plenty of opportunities. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And for these little walked up days, they're, I think they're one of the best types of shooting. It's a variety. And you, and you shoot you shoot what you're going to take home and eat as well, which That's hard, a it's, massive it's sustenance, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's eating what you kill. This is how people used to shoot, especially with the little guns. People used to come out, they'd have a walk around, and they'd, you know, they'd shoot what they, yeah. they wanted to Which I think it's how it should be, not just for the sport, but you know, if you're just killing things for the sport, yeah. sometimes I'm a little bit. Same with some of the, the anglers yeah, you same get. salmon fishing. But when you're actually putting the, the yeah. animals to good use, eating them, yeah. cooking them, yeah. giving to other people, it's, it's fair enough. Uh, that's it, but put your gun low. Yeah, yeah that's it, 12 gun. Partridge still going over the line there, which is fantastic to see. The so next time, in front of that bird, I was maybe about two feet in front. Yeah, so just hook onto it. When we'll so we'll get level with this wood, we'll be pushing across that way anyway. Just a little bit further. Just in front, just in front. Yes! Go on, lad! Give a shot. Oh, mate, I couldn't be happy for you. Couldn't be happy. It couldn't have been any closer, mate. Well, that's what we're hoping for, those birds to come back and over. Oh. Got all the shells. We're going. We know where it is. That's amazing. Oh, mate. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you so much. That's the first one. Over the moon. Well, we've got to find mine now. Oh. Did you say these are good to eat, Johnny? Very good to eat. Yeah. Very good to eat. The French partridge have these different markings like that. Beautiful. Um, and English partridge have um, more of like a. I'm surprised we don't use any of these feathers for fly tying. You will do. You'll use some. Do you want a thought so? Yeah, yeah. A little four ten shells. I mean, you can see the you can see the difference. Yeah. That's ridiculous. So 
I'm in a brief interlude from the shooting here today at Whitfield. Got a couple of birds that the guys are just picking up. So we've been quite lucky with the wind today. The wind is pushing from our left to right across this way. The birds are sort of slowly making the way up towards the top of the hill and then they're sort of rapidly, shall I say, sweeping down that way over the moor. And what was today was supposed to be like a small walked up day has turned into almost a, a semi-driven sort of day, which has been pretty lucky really because of the way the wind's gone. Um, the guys have been able to push the birds perfectly in the right way for us to have some really sort of fast snap shooting and, and some stuff of reasonable height as well, which has been nice. Oh yeah, two, two, two there. Yeah. You get it? Yeah. Good shot, Front. Nice man. Two and two shots, that looks fantastic. Yeah, because he's using a proper gun this time. He's using a big gun. Oh, he's yeah, dropped halfway through the day and we're just going to start on the grouse. I'm having a quick go with my 410 today. I've shot a couple of grouse with it already this year and a few partridge on the first couple of drives. So hopefully we'll get a few on this. So yeah, the idea is you have a quick walk across, then we're going to try some snipe and stuff later. We had a few goes at ducks on the first drive, we shot a couple of teal which was quite nice. Um, and yeah, and hopefully we might get a bit of food later as well. This is where a pack of grouse will get up and go perfectly. Yeah, none of us are loaded. You've shot before, haven't you? But this is your first. No, this is my first proper really? game day. Yeah, oh, I hell. shot at Revo in January, but I only had like a, yeah. a little go. So this is my first proper day. Fantastic. Yeah, so it's been brilliant. in terms of shooting, though, this will be the first walkshop day. First walk. You shot day. a teal on the first drive. Mm -hmm. You shot yeah. partridge already. Yeah. And did you just shoot a grouse? I don't know. Let's go with you shot a grouse. Great. Because it was either you or James, so either way, it's both your first, yeah. which is pretty good. Yeah, that was good. And you've got your dad acting as a chaperone today. Yeah, my dad's with me today. A uh, chaperone slash backup gun. Yes, he's got his long form with him today. He's doing well, isn't he? Mm -hmm. No, well, I'm glad you've had a nice day. Yeah, and it's been brilliant. I think the idea is now that we're going to head back across the, across the fell here and try and see some snipe. So if we can see the snipe, that's great. If we can shoot a snipe, that's even better. If we don't get wet by the big black, big black cloud behind you, that'll be yeah. even better. So, right, let's head off and see where we get to. Didn't sound. We did. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, we've got another one here. Heather's got one. Where did that come from? All oh, right. We'll get this up piping hot and then we'll put the grouse and everything on there. So this is your freshly shot grouse. Obviously shot by one of us because it doesn't look like there's a pellet on it, but look at that. Perfect game meat. Just clean that off because I've been using that. So we'll just take the breasts off because I just want to give you a great idea about what it tastes like today. And all you need to do is put your knife in there, slip it down the back. 
straight through everything. Try and get that bit off the bottom there. Et voila. As long as you're not bothered by a few feathers, we'll be absolutely fine. And it ain't gonna get fresher. Our butter's melting, but that's gonna have to get a little bit warmer before we do anything with that. Take this other side off. Oh, I've missed a bit there. It's a bit easier when you're in the kitchen, isn't it? Take that side off. Cut through him there. Put the him over there. They, they'll taste like nothing you've ever tried before. It might take a while to cook on this, bless it, but... No, honestly, it's, it's absolutely incredible, yeah. Yeah it's, it's, well, it's, yeah, it's a bit like a duck sort of meat, but it is a, it is a really, really gamey meat. But again, you're not, you're not really going to get fresher. So here's your little partridge. I love doing this sort of thing in the field, though. It makes the days for me. If you aren't a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you.